If you look on the mental health DBQ and you scroll down to the symptoms category, go down to box 11, you're going to find flattened effect. And that's what we're talking about today. Welcome back. I'm Combat Craig, and we're talking about increasing your chances of getting a 50% VA disability rating. And this is one of the symptoms in the mental health rating criteria. If you want to learn more about the VA claims process, check out my boot camp at combatcraig.com. And if you need medical evidence, like somebody fill out a DBQ for you, hit up my med team. There's an email address in the description. In order to increase your VA disability rating and get any kind of mental health rating at all, you need to have something that the VA recognizes, a condition that the VA recognizes, and rates. So, Here's the list real quick. Needs to be something the VA recognizes. If we're gonna get a mental health rating of 50%, the VA needs to recognize this. So make sure that you have the diagnostic code on the left here and then one of these conditions. So I'm currently rated for generalized anxiety disorder. Previous to that, I had a rating for unspecified anxiety disorder. And you'll see this a lot. I had unspecified anxiety disorder, unspecified depressive disorder. And as unspecified seems kind of like, hey, what's that? It's still on the list here, right? <laughs> unspecified anxiety disorder, 9413. These things get moved around a little bit from time to time, but as long as you have a diagnostic code and the VA reads it, that's the important part here. So today we're gonna be talking about flattened affect. Kind of sounds like effect, but it's affect. And it's basically devoid of emotion. Flattened affect is severely restricted or non-existent expression of motion. A person with flat affect does not express emotion the way other people do. It's not a condition by itself. It's a symptom of various other conditions, including schizophrenia, autism, PTSD, and everything that's on this list that I showed you here. So one way to think about this and first you have to, do I have this? Is, is this a symptom I have? And because this was a weird one for me, a lot of these things in the uh, rating schedule are, are kind of like, do I have this? Do I have that? They're just kind of weird words, but more broadly, do you have a version of this? How bad is it? And then do you have anything like this? It's, it's, VA squishy law. So I have flattened affect and I've had it for a while, but there's all sorts of degrees of it. I don't even know um, where I'm at on the scale. This is in the 50% rating criteria. So a lot of us have this. This is common among veterans. And um, just kind of as an example, the reason that I am inspired to make this video other than to help you guys out is I'm a uh, Reading a book. Um, I don't read books on uh, like read. I listen to them on Audible. And a good example, it came up. I hear these words because I look at them so much. So I'm always kind of like, what's a different way to explain this? So in this particular situation in this book, uh, this this wife torched the house and two of her kids died in the process. So she called 911 and she was really like just mellow, you know, not, you know, 911 calls, you hear them, you know, on YouTube and stuff. They're usually frantic. I, I'm sure if I ever called 911 for something like that, I'd be losing my shit for sure. And then when the cops came out, it's just she just didn't have she was just devoid of emotion about it. Like her house just got burned down. And she lost two kids and she wasn't hysterical. That's what inspired me to write this. Obviously, um, I do react. Normally, it's with anger, but I do have flattened affect as well. My affect is all over the board. So, you know, good place to start is what's your affect like and where does it fit in? It could be all over the place. If I was to put mine on a scale of zero to ten, it, it moves. That's, that's, <laughs> that's basically it. I can't do it because it's a moving target. My brain's a moving target. Mental health's a moving target. Kind of depends on the situation. So the VA has this on the mental health DBQ. A DBQ is a disability benefits questionnaire. This is going to be filled out when you go to your CNP exam. So you file your claim, prove it. Hopefully you get your doctor to fill out a DBQ. 
because you're going up against a CNP examiner who is definitely going to fill out a DBQ. So it's good to have, you know, your doctor with medical evidence, an exact form that they're going to fill out. It's the public use DBQ versus the internal use DBQ, but tomato, tomato, potato, potato, it's basically the same thing. Check boxes with a doctor that is qualified to sign it at the bottom. You wanna have that before you file your claim and then study your symptoms and how they manifest. And you wanna be prepared to talk about your symptoms. A lot of these symptoms, such as flattened affect, are not necessarily something that the doctor's going to ask you if you have. He's going to be doing a lot of observing. They're qualified, right? Board certified psychologist, board certified psychiatrist. It's most likely going to be a psychologist. But a lot of these symptoms, they're going to look at what you're doing, how you respond to things. So keep that in mind. You're, you're, some of this stuff you could study for, you need to at least know what it is that you're going in for, uh, what you're rated for. And, you know, you're either going to present with the symptoms or not. And usually you have a bunch of these boxes checked. So that's what flattened affect is. And it's in the 50% VA mental health rating criteria. Other things to note are you're going to have symptoms in the 10% rating schedule, 30%. And 50. And if you have enough in 70, that could warrant a higher VA mental health rating. These symptoms are all over the place. If you currently have a 50% rating or a 30% rating, don't leave the 10% stuff out. You're going to have symptoms all the way through the rating schedule. 70% uh, rating is a, a fair rating, but we're talking about the 50% criteria today. So all the rating schedules below that, you're going to have symptoms in there. So how this works, the DBQ matches up with the rating schedule. The rating schedule for mental health is 4.130, and it's the schedule for mental disorders. So if we look at the schedule for mental disorders, we're going to see the criteria and the percentages next to it. And then there's symptoms inside of that. You need to have this, 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 or some combination of these things. And then when you hop over to the DBQ, you're going to see, in most cases, the exact same verbiage. So the DBQ is a good guideline, and that's what the VA Raider's looking at. That's what the CNP examiner's filling out. That's why it's good to have your own doctor do it. If you want to learn more about the VA claims process, check out my boot camp at combatcraig.com. And if you need medical evidence, like somebody fill out a DBQ for you and you can't find a doctor to do it, hit up my med team. There's an email address in the description and it's on screen right here. If you enjoy this kind of content, hit the like button, share it with a friend, leave a comment below. All that stuff helps. And I appreciate you taking time to... Uh, Watch what I have to say today. So let's take a look at the actual rating schedule for a 50% VA disability rating for mental health. You're most likely gonna have a lot of these symptoms. Some of these things you know you do, but we're laymen, right? We, we're not doctors, we can't diagnose ourselves, and we're too close to ourselves. So we don't even, we're not even aware of a lot of the things we do. I become more aware of it because I'm uh, looking at it, but it doesn't mean that it's solved. I'm just aware that I do this weird thing or strange thing or whatever. And when I say strange, it's because there's this like baseline for normal person with no mental health things and then people with mental health problems. So it's, it's just a disability like everything else. So learning as much as you possibly can about your disability is huge, especially when you're filing a claim for it. So if we look at the schedule here, it comes down to occupational and social impairment. It's also known as functional impairment. That's kind of the combination of the two. Occupational is work, social is your home life. In contrast, when you're filing a social security disability claim, there's only zero or 100, you either win or you don't, and it's all about the work. With VA ratings and claims, it's different. They take your social life into account. So that's uh, marriages, problems all over the place, problems dealing with people. Uh, your kids don't talk to you anymore. You know, what? how impaired are you in your social life? And then how impaired are you in your uh, occupational or in your work life? 50% rating is occupational and social impairment with reduced reliability and productivity due to such symptoms as 
Flattened affect, so that's the first one. Circumstantial or stereotyped speech. Panic attacks more than once a week. Difficulty in understanding complex commands. Impairment of short and long-term memory. A couple examples are retention of only highly learned material. Forgetting to complete tasks. And by the way, is this, this sounds like my life. We got like lots of these things. Impaired judgment, impaired abstract thinking, disturbances of motivation and mood, difficulty in establishing and maintaining effective work and social relationships. So this is actually a good example speaking to the occupational and social impairment. It says right on here, difficulty in establishing and maintaining effective work and social relationships. So, you know, you have the uh, normal person, Humans are, uh, you know, social beings. So it's not like you get along with everybody, but, you know, you want to have friends, you want to be in the mix. I don't want any of that. I talk to you guys through a camera and I'm happy that I'm not in a crowd and, you know, I'm not looking for a bunch of friends and I'm perfectly unhappy uh, being happy like that. So that's, that's one example of social and occupational impairment. If you want to learn more about the VA claims process, check out my bootcamp at combatcraig.com. And if you need medical evidence, hit up my med team. There's an email address in the description. So let me know where you're at on the uh, VA mental health reading. I talk to a lot of you guys in boot camp, and I know this is uh, confusing, the whole concept of mental health. There's concerns about if I file a mental health claim, how's it going to impact my job? my 2A rights, a, a, a lot of concerns out there. Let me know where you're at, what you're thinking. Leave a comment, and I'll see you on the next video.